The Lord be with you. We're glad to have you with us today. Welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. Our readings and our hymns and the sermon will be focused on the transfiguration of our Lord. The service is the service of Matins. You can find it in your Lutheran service book on page 219. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. Our office hymn for Transfiguration Sunday is a wondrous type of vision fair. O wondrous type, O vision fair, of glory that the church may share, which Christ upon the mountain shows, where brighter than the sun he glows. With Moses and Elijah nigh, the incarnate Lord holds converse high. And from the cloud the Holy One bears record to the only Son. With shining face and bright array, Christ deigns to manifest today. What glory shall be theirs above, who joy in God with perfect love. And faithful hearts are raised on high by this great vision's mystery, for which in joyful strains we raise the voice of prayer the hymn of praise. O Father, with the eternal Son and Holy Spirit ever one, we pray Thee bring us by Thy grace to see Thy glory face to face. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. 
And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. And Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire, around Him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. St. Paul writes, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful and underhanded ways, we refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statements of the truth we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. 
and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. In Jesus' name, Amen. My good Christian friends, during Super Bowl 53 in 2018, as it is common for most Super Bowl Sundays, the next big thing after talking about the game itself was talking about the commercials that seem to run endlessly during the commercial breaks. And one of them that got people's attention that year was the Tide detergent ad. The idea communicated to the viewers in their ad was that every single commercial on TV comes down to a tight ad. The actor would break into different types of ads, cars, beer, family, beach, fun time, and so on, point to the outfit worn by the actors in that commercial and say, tight ad. The whole point of the commercial was, no matter what you are willing to sell, to announce in your commercial, you'll always be in need of shining bright clean clothes for the cast. Cleaning clothes is Tide's job, so everything is a Tide ad. What led me to bring up the Tide ad on the Transfiguration Sunday? Well, the first reason, of course, was because St. Mark tells us that Jesus' clothes on the mountaintop were white as no one can bleach. Many clothes cleaners boast themselves of a perfect white or perfect bright colors after you use them. So if we think we have seen clean, dazzling clothes, what about as white as no one could bleach? We can be sure that what happened there was not something that humans could work. If they couldn't do what they witnessed there with clothes alone, how could they even begin to think about doing the rest of it? What an amazing event Transfiguration was. Speaking of the event itself, another aspect of the Transfiguration experience. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus were all together there. That is, the whole written word of God was represented in that experience before the disciples. And from the text, we also learned that Jesus didn't want them to put out tents for him and the two guests in the mountain because the very content of their conversation was down there in the prairie, the real life that they had among the people, and especially Christ's cross-driven mission. And then there was the voice, the same voice heard at Jesus' baptism, the same phrase, the same message. In Greek, the sentence here reads, Him be hearing. Two things are demanded here to listen, the first of them, and then 
to listen to a specific person. And things are in the proper order. Him be hearing. This is one of the greatest takeaways for the disciples from that experience. It was not only about seeing Moses and Elijah. It was not only about an incredible once in a lifetime experience. It was not just about white clothes. It was about Christ. It was about hearing him. And here's another connection with that Super Bowl ad. In that commercial, the actor would show up in virtually any type of situation for TV commercials and point out to the character's clothes and say, you see, Tide ad. The main message was that Tide is present in every aspect of every commercial because every commercial requires clean, right clothes. In a play of words, I would point to the Father's voice saying, Him be hearing, and say to you today, Christ's act. Yes, when we look to every situation in life, that's not a tide ad, that's Christ's act. Christ is there, Christ in action. Christ is behind everything we do as children of God. We can point out and say, Christ's act, in family, in our personal life, with our friends, in our society, societal life, in sorrow and pain, in life and death. Well, even in sorrow, Pastor? Even in life and death situations? Yes, and especially in them. This may sound a little off the wall to our contemporary ears. Who wants to point out to loss, sorrow, lack of richness and prosperity and say, Christ's act? In a time when many people, including churches, advocate the idea that if you're a Christian, you will be a healthy and wealthy type of person, Christ's act in problems, in times of loss, in not my so prosperous times? No way. But Christ comes to every situation in our life. He came to make our life intensively clean from sin in a way no one could do it. We can't bleach our lives out of sin with our self-righteousness. We can't bleach our lives with works. We can't even clean our lives by mere positiveness or feeling good-like thoughts. We need Christ's act. His action on the cross is the one that changes our lives. It is the one that cleans our hearts. Christ's action is a once and for all, for everybody, a once and for all action. Also, Christ's acts are there in our daily life. Sometimes we ascribe it to different things like luck, serendipity, chance. Sometimes one would ascribe this even to different types of power or energy that surround us. But for us Christians, it is unmistakable. Christ's act. He takes action in our lives. What the problem usually is when we have a hard time seeing and confessing it, in such times, we might be away from the voice that says, Him be hearing. And as sinners, we would be even uh, trying to teach Him. Him be teaching how he should do, what He should do, how He should act in our lives, instead of Him be hearing. Take Peter, for example. At the mountaintop, instead of hearing, he started talking. And then he uttered all the wrong words. And why? Because he was afraid. When we feel afraid, when we feel anxious, when we feel lost, then we all have all the more reasons to Him be hearing. And Him be hearing is completely different thing, a completely different thing compared to the Super Bowl ad. Because no matter what product is being publicized, even if they bring satisfaction to 90% of their consumers, there will be always people dissatisfied with it, to whom that product did not deliver what it promised. In Christ, there is no such thing as not delivering what He has promised. He is 100% effective in His Word, in His sacrament, in His presence. 100% of effectiveness every day. One day we will be wearing clothes so intensively white that no one on earth could even think of bleaching it like that. That's what we learn from the book of Revelation. That will take place in heaven, our final destination through faith in Jesus, because of the greatest of all of the Christ's acts, His death on the cross and His resurrection on the third day. 
as we live our lives in the manifold situations that it presents us with, He calls us to Him be hearing in each one of them. Because each step in our life is nothing less than a Christ's act. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus for life everlasting. Amen. One of the features of the season of Lent, which we're about to enter into this Wednesday, is liturgically speaking, the Alleluia's go away during that season. They come back again on Easter morning and are very prominent during the season of Easter and then throughout the rest of the year. But here we have uh, an opportunity, and often at the end of the Transfiguration Sunday service, we will sing this hymn, Alleluia, Song of Gladness. Today we will use it as our canticle. Alleluia, song of gladness, voice of joy that cannot die. Alleluia is the anthem ever raised by choirs on high. In the house of God abiding, thus they sing eternally. Alleluia, thou resoundest, true Jerusalem and free. Alleluia, joyful mother, all thy children sing to thee. But by Babylon's sad waters, mourning exiles now are we. Alleluia, cannot always be our song while here below. Alleluia, our transgressions make us for a while forego. For the solemn time is coming when our tears for sin must flow. Therefore in our hymns we pray thee, grant us blessed Trinity. At the last to keep thine Easter with thy faithful saints on high. There to thee forever singing, Alleluia joyfully. We gather together our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that now return to you. We pray that by them more people would come to know Christ Jesus, your Son, and have their faith and hope and trust in him. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you reveal to us that all the law and the prophets are fulfilled in Christ Jesus, your Son. Send your blessing upon all pastors and servants of your church, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom all fatherhood under heaven is named, support and bless every Christian home, that husbands and wives would be devoted to one another, and parents would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless our Queen and all those entrusted with this responsibility in this land, that they would serve with integrity and honor for the well-being of all. Provide those who serve in the Regina Police Services with the wisdom, fortitude, and mercy needed to keep the public peace and protect those in need. Grant all first responders with strength of body, mind, and spirit to care for all in trouble of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or enduring ongoing treatments. 
that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or mentally ill. Surround them with those who know your redeeming love and will mercifully care for them. Grant steadfastness to those near death, comfort to those who grieve, and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to all your children. Hasten us through the plague of pandemic and lift from us the threat of death and the spread of illness that we may join together again to your glory and for the benefit of our neighbor in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end, Lord, that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through that same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadow our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in His glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. We pray this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We thank you for joining us today. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, as the season of Epiphany now comes to a close, we pray that you would have a blessed um, walk through the season of Lent towards Easter, Holy Week and Easter. This Wednesday is the beginning of the season of Lent officially with Ash Wednesday. We will have a service available for you that evening. Uh, so Wednesday evening it will be available for you. If you are in the Regina area and you would like to come to the church to receive Holy Communion and the imposition of ashes as the beginning point for your walk through the season of Lent, uh, please contact the church office to announce that you're coming and receive a time to arrive. We have some times left uh, yet in the morning, the afternoon, and in the evening. So if you would like to come that day to begin Lent in that way, receiving Holy Communion, please contact the church, uh, and we can make arrangements for you to join us. Those are all the announcements we have for you today. Go in God's peace and in His joy. Thanks be to God.